Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a fully automated invoice in Excel. Perfect for the construction industry, but honestly, it works for any field involving repetitive tasks. If you're tired of typing the same information over and over again, juggling multiple projects, or just want to make your invoicing faster and more efficient, this video is for you. Once it's set up, you just update it as needed. No more starting from scratch. It's a huge time saver. In this automated invoice, we have an activity list. The rate or price based on the contract will automatically appear. Simply enter the quantity of completed activities and select the relevant unit from the list. For example, square meter, cubic meter, percentage, thousand bricks, and more. It automatically calculates the subtotal, applicable percentage, and the grand total. It also shows the invoice number, for example, 1000. There are two buttons included, one to save the invoice as a PDF and one to generate a new invoice for new activities. When you click Save PDF, it automatically saves a PDF copy for you. When you click New Invoice, it clears the current invoice and makes it ready for the next day. So, let's get started and build this from scratch. Depending on your needs, industry standards, and project requirements, the first step is formatting your invoice. The invoice title, invoice number, date, due date, contractor name, for example, XYZ Construction, and the client name Tech4 Engineer, the name of this YouTube channel. It also includes the project name and an email address. Below that, you'll find columns for activity number, activity name, quantity, unit, and total amount. At the bottom, it includes the subtotal, GST or tax percentage, and the total invoice amount. You can also add a note at the end if needed. To generate this invoice, we need two sheets. One, invoice sheet, where the invoice is created, name it invoice. Two, data sheet, where all the supporting data is stored, name it data sheet. We'll input all the data in the data sheet and link it to the invoice sheet. A table format has been applied to the necessary cells, and a couple of cells have been colored for better aesthetics. Let's dive into the actual build and get everything set up. Now I would like to first have the numbers 01, 02, and a 3. When I drag them down, I can get the sequence of numbers. But as I mentioned, I need a 0 in front of each number. I select these cells, then right-click and choose Format Cells. In the Format Cells window, Change the format to text. Once you select text and click OK, you can write 01, 02, and 03. Then drag them down to fill all the cells. The second thing I would like to have in this invoice is the activity list and the unit list, where you can select activities and units from a drop down list. Also, the rates or prices should automatically appear when any activity is selected. All three the activity, the unit, and the rate should be brought from the data sheet. Currently, my data sheet is empty. In this sheet, you should include all activities related to your project. You can either write the data sheet manually or copy and paste activities from the bidding document, contract, construction schedule, or estimation sheets, depending on the project. As you can see, I have copied and pasted all these activities from another Excel sheet where I use them for a building project in an Excel Gantt chart, which is very useful for time management. That Excel Gantt chart is available on this YouTube channel, and it's similar to Primavera or MS Project. If you haven't watched it, go and check that out. Once you have all this information, you'll see I have categorized activity, price, and then the units. Often in construction projects, we use linear meters, square meters, cubic meters, lump sum, bags, percentage, and 1,000 bricks. The price depends on the unit. Now that I have all these activities in the data sheet, I would like to link them to the invoice sheet. First, I go to the data menu. Then I go to data validation and click on data validation. From the drop down list, I choose list and then in the source, I select the data sheet. I select all the activities. Once the activities have been selected, I click on the little arrow and then click OK. 
Now, as you see, all the activities are available in the drop-down list. To fill the table, I select from the little corner when the cursor shape changes and drag it down. At the moment, I just want to select and delete them. But even if you delete them, the list will still be available. Now I'll do the same for the units. Again, I go to the data sheet and then to the data menu. Then I go to data validation, click on data validation, choose list, and in the source, provide the list from the data sheet. Then I click on the little arrow and click OK. I select from the corner and drag it down. Again, I would like to select and delete them at the moment. Now, I would like to link the rate or the prices from the data sheet. For that purpose, I can use the lookup function or index and match functions in Excel. However, if you're using the VLOOKUP function, you might get an error, so I recommend using the index and match functions instead of VLOOKUP, as I'm using here in this Excel sheet. I write equal, then write index, and open parentheses. Then I go to the data sheet and select the column of the prices, and then write a comma. After the comma, I write match, and open parentheses again. There we have the lookup value, which is the activity that we're looking for. Then another comma, and we have the lookup array. For the lookup array, we go back to the data sheet, select the activity column, then comma, and we look for the exact match, which is zero. We put zero and close the parentheses. Now for this data sheet, I want to lock the cells, so I press F4, and that way we lock them. After locking the cells, press Enter, and you will get an error. This is because I don't have an activity in the activity column, but if I choose an activity, then automatically the rate will be shown. As you see, I'm selecting all the activities and the rates are showing. Then I drag the formula down to the table for all the cells, but as you see, it shows an error. To remove this error and show an empty cell, I am going to use the if error function. I go to the index formula again, write if error, open parentheses, put a comma, then write double quotation marks, close the parentheses, and press Enter. Now if I drag this down to the end, I see that the cells are empty. Then for the total, I write equal, then click on cell D12, then multiply it by the rate or the price, and it shows the total price for us in dollars. However, in the list of units, we have percentages or we have 1,000 in bricks, or we have the item. Usually, if the progress is in percentages, and you're going to put the percentage in the quantity cell, then this total should be according to the unit that we select. Or, if the price is based on 1,000 bricks, and we have the units as 1,000 bricks, then the total price should change accordingly. For that purpose, I would also like to write functions for these totals, so that if the units change, the total prices should be updated. I'm going to use the ifs function. So write ifs function, open parentheses, and write. If the cell E12 is equal to percentage, then divide D12 by 100, and then multiply it by the price cell, which is F12. Then in the second logic, if E12 is equal to 1,000 brick, then divide the quantity by 1,000 and multiply it by the rate. For all other cases, we write true and multiply the rate by the quantity, and then we close the parentheses. Here we have a mistake. You would need to put quotation marks, and then press Enter. Now I can test it, and it works perfectly.
Now I would like to bring this formula and copy it to all the cells. So I select from the corner and drag it down to the last cell. When I copy it to other cells, it shows errors, but we don't want to see these errors when the activity cells are empty. To solve this error, I am using the if error function again. This way, if the rate cells or the quantity cells are empty, then we will not have that error. For example, if I drag it down to the end, now the cell will be empty, and I don't have that error anymore. Whenever I have an activity, it brings the price, but it shows zero because we don't have a quantity. If you put the quantity, then it will multiply. For subtotal, I write equal, then write sum, open parentheses, select all the above cells, then close parentheses and press enter, and we will have all the subvalues. For GST, write equal. 10% is equal to 10 divided by 100. Or you can write 0 0.1 multiplied by the subtotal, and that shows the 10%. Then we have the grand total, which is equal to the sum of the subtotal and GST or tax. As you see, the sheet includes the grid lines, which I don't want. For that purpose, I go to the view menu and remove the tick. Then I write the number, for example, 1000 as the invoice number. For the date, I write equal, then today, and that shows the date of the day. If the invoice is due in 14 days or in two weeks, then we can write the current date plus 14 days and it will show the due date. For the company name or subcontractor name, I write XYZ construction. To create buttons to save the file as a PDF and generate new invoices, we save the file as a macro-enabled workbook and name the sheet invoice. First, I create a button to save the file as a PDF. I go to the Developer menu. If you don't have this Developer menu, go to the Excel File tab, then Options, and from Excel Options go to Customize Ribbon. There, you can tick the Developer option. Now, I'm in the Developer menu. I click on Visual Basic, and once you click on it, another window opens where you can write code. From the Insert menu, I select Module. Now I would like to write the code. But remember, if you don't know the code, don't worry, you can simply use the same code I'm using. I've also put this code in the comments. Write Sub PDF. Then write DIM, which stands for Dimension and is used in Visual Basic to define variables. Write the invoice variable as long and press enter. Then write dim custom as another variable as string. Press enter. Then dim path as another variable as string. Press enter. Then dim f name as a variable as string. Set invoice equal to the value in range f3, which is the cell for the invoice number. Set custom equal to range c7 which is the cell for the name of the contractor. Let me change the variable name custom to company name. Then set the path variable to the location of the folder where you would like to save the PDF file. For example, I would like to save it in a folder on the desktop named invoice. Right click on the folder and go to Properties to copy the location or path of the folder. Once you've copied the location, paste it into the path variable between double quotation marks. Remember to write the name of the folder at the end, and finally, add a backslash. Then write the fname variable as I am doing. I use an underscore because it will be shown in the name of the PDF file. Finally, write the active sheet line as active sheet. Export as fixed format type equals Excel type PDF. Ignore print areas equals false. 
file name equals path and f name. I have not yet set the print area. To do it, select the invoice, then go to page layout, then print area and click on set print area. Remember, you should not have any spelling mistakes in the code and be careful with spaces. If everything is written correctly, the code will run without any errors. I've also added this code in the comments. Once the code is completed, go to the insert menu to insert a button. Right click on the inserted shape and write save PDF on it. Once the name is set, right click on it again and assign macro. When you click on the button, it will save the file as a PDF. As you can see, the file is saved as a PDF, and the file name includes both the invoice number and the contractor company name. Then, I'm going to create another button that clears the activities and makes the invoice ready for the next time. For that, I write the code as sub new invoice. Then set the invoice range equal to F3, which is the cell for the invoice number. This number should be cleared. Then set the range from C11 to E29. This is the area I want to clear to make the invoice ready for next time. After that, write dot clear contents. Once I run it, it automatically clears the content as you can see. I copy the PDF button, edit its text to new invoice, and assign the macro. We have created an automated invoice that can be used in different projects and save your time. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention.